After the Daytona 500, the Bristol Night Race draws a crowd like no other event in NASCAR. The tiny half-mile oval in Tennessee is known as the last great Coliseum. Everybody wants to win at Bristol under the lights. I mean, it's just such a special place. And you think back about all the sparks that have flown and just what makes that place have so much excitement. The fans come out and just pack that place. It's electric. And so when we put our helmets on and we strap in and you roll off pit road at Bristol, you feel like you are in a coliseum and you feel like you're going to do battle and you want to come out and you want to conquer it. Something about when you turn the lights on, it's just different. Like people get madder, they get more agitated, they get aggravated. The Bristol Night Race is what made Bristol famous. Every time we go there, it never disappoints. It's always a good race. There's always a storyline after. And a place like that where there's seats all the way around, you know, nearly 100,000 people there. It's just uh, the coolest thing ever. Saturday night, racing under the lights. It's Bristol, baby. The race is 500 laps long, but when each one lasts only 15 seconds and the track is crowded with 40 cars and with steep banking, it's the ultimate melting pot. As soon as you let your guard down, something happens and next thing you know, your, your hood's up over your windshield because they've spun out and wrecked or you've been hit in the back or whatever the case may be. You can't really see the exit of the corner until you round the center part of the corner to how steep the banking is and the sight lines with the roof. And so sometimes you come up on the wrecks before you even see them. You can always see me smile when somebody says Bristol Night Race. Um, the Bristol Night Race is just special for me. It, it has been for 30 years. It's a short track race. It's under the lights. It's on Saturday night. It's all the things that I did since I was 12 years old. It's also just an incredible racetrack. It's neat to see the guys run the top and run the bottom and just to be able to make those decisions and calculate when you're going to pass somebody. It's just a, a great place to race at and we always look forward to going there. Harvick's going to win at the last great Coliseum. Harvick wins at Bristol. I think the biggest thing is uh, being adaptive. You know, they put the, the PJ1 residue down on the racetrack, so you just have to really be able to search around and figure out where the grip is and if you have to run up high or how you're gonna set somebody up for a pass. So there's just so many things that change and you have to adapt to during the race. So they use the traction compound and they put it right around the bottom and you know, it, that'll be the preferred line. So you have to be able to hug the line and run very close to the apron so no one can get underneath of you and you have to have your car where it rolls the middle really well. Because if you're parking in the middle, those guys can get to your bumper and they can knock you loose and knock you out of the way. It's different than everywhere else, right? Because when the caution comes out, you have about 30 seconds to talk. And then you better be on the pit stall or you've missed it and you've made a mistake. The driver has to get information quickly. The spotter's talking. There's a lot going on and trying to organize a crew, especially a crew that, oh, by the way, besides four tires, pull out that right side fender because he just bashed on somebody trying to get by him. They have to have direct leadership that, that knows, hey, we're listening to this guy and nobody else is talking. And, and it's, there's a lot of things that you don't have to deal with. You go to Daytona and you've got five minutes to talk about about what's gonna happen when you come to pit road. At Bristol, you're there before you know it. Everything's happening fast. If you're running up front, you catch lap traffic fast. If you're running in the back, the leaders catch you fast. If you're trying to work your way through lap traffic, you need to do it fast or the guys behind you are gonna catch you. And you're just constantly on high alert and it's just very intense. NASCAR moved the race from August into the playoffs a few years ago. And while this adds to the jeopardy, the world's largest conveyor belt hardly needs any extra prominence to ensure its status. That was the first race I ever went to as a fan. It's kind of like your first concert being a Rolling Stones concert, right? Like nothing else really compares after that. So you kind of set the bar way too high as a fan to go there. But the atmosphere, the noise, the driver intro, the excitement, the sparks, the smell, it uses so many of your senses. You walk out of there and your ears are ringing for a day and things happen fast, it's exciting, and it's three and a half hours of, of adrenaline rush for sure. Yeah!